winning this title will not be easy. In the second position is Alita Sill, who won here in 1984 and 1986. In the third spot, the 1989 Player of the Year, Robin Romeo. And in the fourth position, Diana Davenport-Teeters looking for her second career title. everybody to Las Vegas, Nevada, the Sandstone Bowling Center, for the 1992 Bud Light Sandstown Invitational. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Pito, filling in for Denny Schreiner. This should be quite an afternoon. This is one of the three majors on the tour. It's the last singles tournament of the season, and there is $20,000 on the line for the winner. And also, we could not have scripted this any better, because Carol Giannotti and Tish Johnson are vying for Bowler of the Year honors, and they are both in our final five. And after the tournament, the first ever Bud Light showdown, it will be a shootout for dollars. Great to be here. Great to be working with Leila Wagner, Johnson, or Giannotti. Well, that's a tough question right now, Bill. It's been a great race so far for the Bowler of the Year honors. Carol Giannotti, though, is leading that race. She has four titles this year with uh, Tish Johnson trailing behind with three. Carol Giannotti also leading in the earnings department. It appears Tish Johnson must win this event to win the Bowler of the Year race. But let's not forget about Alita Sill. She's in the number two spot, Bowler of the Year in 84 and 85. And she's also fared very well here at Samstown. She has won this event in two previous years. She also has a little bit of a grudge match against Tish, Tish Johnson. If she makes it to the title match, she uh, is going to go up against her. She finished second in the U.S. Open against her by only three pins. Third spot, Robin Romeo, 1989 Player of the Year. Another player that's been bowling very well. She finished third just two weeks ago in Rockford. She's also bowled well here at Samstown. Finished second two times. A player with a lot of experience, 13 titles. She could be a very strong contender for this title today. And Diana Davenport-Teeters just got married, and she's in the fourth spot. Well, the odds are stacked up against Diana Davenport. She has one career title, but her opposing uh, competitors have 53. Also, Diana has a low average of uh, television shooting of 163. Her average on this television pair is 226, relatively high. If she could get things going today, she could go up the ladder. So our first match, Davenport Teeters against Carol Giannotti. And remember, Giannotti won from the fifth position two weeks ago. And Giannotti will go first. This is her sixth consecutive television appearance that's never, ever been done before. She's been first or second in the previous five events on the fall tour. That also has never been done before. And she is very tired, both mentally, physically, emotionally. It is just a, a big grind. This event uh, in particular is, is a long event. It's a 54-game format. It takes a lot of a, out of a player. Needs to pick up the 8, 9, 10 here. This is a little longer, as you mentioned, in terms of qualifying. The normal qualifying is 42 games. So they have to bowl an awful lot just to get into the television round. And how about the effect of being on TV so much? Well, that alone, uh, just the, the added uh, games that uh, she's bowling on the telecast. But uh, once again, that emotional pressure. After the spare for Giannotti, it's now Davenport Teeters, her first frame. Just got married last Saturday. That's right. In all the medieval garb, beautiful opening shot, just dices the rack. A very, very strong player. Diana Davenport has a very deliberate game. She has a five-step approach. Uh, once again, a deliberate push away. Watch here as she pushes on her second step. She tries to take her time, keeps everything uh, very precise, very high backswing. If she is not in time, this could be a minus for her. Tries to be very deliberate. Goes through the same routine every time before she bowls. Second frame and another strike, a double for Davenport Peters to start. Now Carol Giannotti. Had a title last spring in New Orleans, has three titles this fall. Comes into the tournament with four titles. And as we mentioned in the opening, really the front runner at this point uh, in the Bowler of the Year race for Carol. If she does not get past this first or second match or make it into the title match, she has to hope that Tish Johnson does not win this event in order to become Bowler of the Year. Struggling, though, it looks with her first shots here. 
Ball coming up a little bit high. She needs to get to a little bit to the left, really project the ball right, be aggressive. I, I don't feel that uh, she's, I think she's drained. I, I think it's difficult for her to find the momentum. Picks up a 3-6-10 for her second spare. Look at Carol Giannotti's game. Actually starts the ball a little early, takes a five-step approach as well. Look at the difference in back swings before, between Diana Davenport and Carol. Hers is about shoulder height. Very good knee bend. Nice cupped wrist. Needed a nine in her last shot in the position round last night just to get in here, and she got it. And Sandra Joe Shirey had an 8-10 to miss getting in here by just one pin. So you talk about the pressure of playing week after week. She had a lot of pressure last night just to get into the television round. Made it by one pin. It was an incredible position round. Also, Tish Johnson uh, shooting 298 against Alita Seal to take over the number one spot. That's exactly where Tish Johnson wanted to be. Giannotti now needs the 128 for her third consecutive spare to begin. Three straight spares for Giannotti. A look at the first shot where she missed the head pin. She's uh, 15 feet. She's playing around the 14th board. 30 feet. She's all the way out to the 5th board. That's why the ball never made it back. She cannot swing the ball really outside the 10th board. The players were playing uh, inside between 10 and 15, between the 2nd and 3rd arrow. There was not much room to the right to really swing it. You can see there Diana Davenport playing that tight line round 15 to 13. Leaves a four pin after starting with two consecutive strikes. Davenport Teeters was up, was up by 16. The three things that she does before she bowls, she tells herself to stay deliberate, walk straight, reach to the target. And she says that each time she's a computer programmer and her coach Larry Matthews has tried to have her use her analytical ability to analyze her bowling swing and her bowling routine. And you see her going through that right now. He also taught her uh, a target alignment system, and this is basically what she was lacking. And her new husband, Larry Teeters, uh, of only eight days. I think he was more nervous. He was cutting some tape for her bowling ball earlier and shaking. I said, calm down, Larry. It's okay. But it's been a long time for Diana. She made a telecast. Uh, last tournament that uh, she did was... Gosh, two years ago, 1991. Her last title was four years ago in 1989 fourth, in Fort Pierce. Fourth frame up by 15. Davenport Teeters had said that she often thinks too much, and her new coach has had her focus on using that thinking to her bowling, and she says it's really helped her out a lot. Taking a look at the pin action there, the head pin up against the wall really did the work here, everything but the two pin. So after two strikes, Davenport is looking for her second consecutive spare. Down goes the two. Now Carol Giannotti, her fourth frame. Giannotti, as you talked about, Leila, last night after the position round, looked like she was just wiped out. Well, right now she is not bowling uh, that well. She moved in good ball speed that time. Oh, bad break here. Pocket hit 4-9. Giannotti does not have a strike yet. A much better shot. Stayed uh, in line here, playing right around the 12th board to about the 9th board. Perfect alignment. Watch this ball just breaking really high, sharp, right around the nine. Normally, it, the ball takes out the nine. Here's a look at bowler track. You see 15 feet, 12th board, only to the ninth board. Oh, gave it Misses a good run. The 4-9 went for the four. We talked to Carol Giannotti about what it was like to get ready here to go for bowler of the year. Uh, I feel a little bit nervous, but I don't feel that bad. Uh, my body feels pretty tired. I mean, I've got a couple of hard matches ahead of me, and I mean, I've just got to get there and make good shots and hope for the best. So far, Giannotti is down by 28, though, as she prepares here to bowl in the fifth frame. Well, she said she has to hope for the best, and uh, things have been going her way. She is on a roll. So far today, though, they haven't seemed to be. Once again, letting that ball out too far to the right. I don't think she can believe what she left there. Washout. 
Well, the lane 19 has appeared to be tighter. It's tighter for the left-handers. So I was able to talk to Tish Johnson while practicing. She said the 19 and 20 for them have always been uh, a little different. 19 always tighter. Tish Johnson used two different balls. Spectacular spare. In this event, uh, in, the, in the past. Perfect conversion here. Watch the head pin fly right into the 10 pin. This could be the momentum that Carol Giannani needs to get going. Davenport teeters. Fifth frame for her up by 28. Two eight. Could be a difficult spare conversion here with the eight pin sitting behind the two. A little shake of the head by Diana. Just a little bit uh, more revolutions, a little bit uh, to the right, maybe one board, she would be flush into the pocket. Six-year pro, Davenport Teeters, one career title, 1989 Ebonite Fireball Classic. So she, at least in terms of television experience, is way behind Carol Gian Giannotti. 2-8, conversion, nice spare there. But Diana is, is a very uh, mature player, um, Bill. She really is probably not even thinking about the fact that these other players had um, have this much experience against her. For her, it's just strictly, I'm out here to bowl. I've got a great game. She knows it. Her problem has been, like I said, alignment, target alignment. She did call her coach, Larry Matthews, in between blocks yesterday morning. He made some suggestions with equipment. It worked for her. She made the telecast. She's a very confident player. And a strike. Davenport Peters trying to derail Carol Giannotti as Giannotti's going for bowler of the year, but Davenport Peters has three strikes and six frames, and she has a commanding lead. Stay with us, everybody. The championship round finals of the 1992 Bud Light Samstown Invitational are being brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. By Midas. For mufflers, brakes, and shocks, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. And by Old Spice Conditioning Hydrogel. It's the simple solution to saving face. Carol Giannotti, who won in Rockford two tournaments ago from the fifth position, started today in the fifth position, but right now in her sixth frame, she's down by 26 points. Pins. Carol just switched on the equipment, went to a different ball, trying to find a different reaction. It surprises me, though, because on lane 20, she did hit the pocket last time, did leave the 4-9. But apparently she was not like the reaction that she got from the other ball. Once again, coming up a little bit high. In her five-year career, Giannotti had over $140,000 in earnings. This year alone, she's over 70 grand. Okay. Misses, leaves the 10. And it does not appear things are going Carol's way. If she would have won this event, she would have put her over the $100,000 mark, the only the third player to do so in the history of ladies pro bowling. Watch this. The three pin hits the six, but the six pin wraps around the 10. What a terrible break. Seventh frame now for Giannotti, down by 40. Four, seven. She made a gutsy move by switching balls. It's the only thing she could have done, being down by 26 pins. She just does not seem to be real aggressive, real strong right now. She does not seem to be as firm as she has been. We've seen her really come up through the ladder. Picks up the spare, but Giannotti has had a strikeless match so far. And Davenport Teeters, in her first television appearance of the year, has a commanding lead. Giannotti... I guess it's got to end sometime. I mean, she was, has just been absolutely remarkable. Well, she says, I just want this event to be over. She says, I, she, I'm not going to pick up a ball for six weeks, but she will if she gets eliminated right here. We will see her again in about an hour with uh, our Bud Light showdown coming up. Giannotti is heading for Australia, her home in Perth. She says, she, don't bother her on the beach. <laughs> Leave her alone. It's summer over there now. I bet she'll be flying first class with the amount of money she's made this fall. Davenport Peters with a strike, and she's been awfully impressive here. And as we watch, watch her mouth the routine that we were talking about. Staying deliberate, walk straight, reach for the target. It's something that has really helped her slow down and has uh, definitely helped her here. Well, she's making good, crisp shots. She appears to be lined up. See her mouthing 
the routine right there. Eighth frame for her. Oh. oh. What a player does not like to see a blowout 7-10. You got to smile because you really can't throw it any better than that. She just crunched the pins, the five pin. Watch it. It's going to go behind the seven pin here. Oh, terrible break. Six pin sits in the channel, does not take out the 10. That five pin did not do its job. <laughs> Going for the 7-10 split. Only thing she can hope is possibly bounce it out. Doesn't do it. Leaves the seven. So an open frame for Davenport Teeters here in the eighth. And now it's Carol Giannotti. And a little smile by Carol uh, once again with a 36 pin deficit. Uh, She's probably going to go out and say, yeah, I know it's over. I'm just, this is a good shot there. Much better ball speed, crisper shot. She's been averaging about 18 miles per hour on the shot, but she just hasn't been around the pocket at all. She's been coming in a little too high. Actually, uh, that particular ball was 18. She had been down a little bit closer to 17, and I think that could have been one of her problems. Maybe fatigue playing a factor there. Exactly. For the four and a spare for Giannotti in the eighth frame. It's my understanding she's also up a, a little bit in the gambling department, so while she's been uh, <laughs> How off are the you lane, doing, Leon? Uh, I have not played yet. I've been very good. Get ready tonight, though, huh? Yes. Unfortunately, I, I get to, to stay over the... I better season. go warn these people. Look out for Miss Wagner. Giannotti, ninth frame. And a strike. First one. It took her a long time. Kind of a, yeah, I can strike. <laughs> uh, the best possible game Carol Giannotti can shoot is 185, and she says, where's this been? And uh, all the other people <laughs> give her a big round of applause. She gives herself a, yay, I knew I could throw a strike somewhere. Ninth frame now for Davenport Teeters. Strike right there. Well, she did average 226 on this pair. So far, she's bowling at a 2-0 pace. If she does strike out, she'd shoot 222. And I did mention if uh, she was going to do that, she could march up the ladder. She said last night that this has already been her best tournament of the year. Well, her highest finish before this this year was eighth. She also said it's been the best tournament of her career so far in terms of her consistency. Even though she has won, she won back in 1989. Well, it's a long format. Wash out there. And when you bowl in that long format and you do stay consistent in both the morning blocks, the afternoon blocks, the evening blocks, then you know it's uh, whether it's been the best of your career. You surprised at all how this has unfolded? No, not at all. Um, um, I'm surprised Carol couldn't pull it out somewhere, some of the adrenaline from, from somewhere, just from momentum or just being in it again, and I think she thought she could too, but uh, it, I can't imagine. I've never been in the position to make six telecasts, and it, I can't imagine the, the amount of uh, strain it, it has taken on her. Very likely, so you're having fun there with Davenport Dieters, who just converted the spare. Giannotti picked up the game when Wendy McPherson went over to Australia with some other bowlers and said, hey, Carol, you might want to try to be a professional in, a, in the United States. She said if Wendy doesn't come over there, she might be working in a desk job right now. Does that mean she's going to split her uh, money with Wendy? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, we'll take a break as Davenport Peters has beaten Carol Giannotti, perhaps derailing Giannotti's chances for Bowler of the Year. More to come. Welcome back, everybody, to Las Vegas. Our second match, Diana Davenport-Peters will start, and she's taking on Robin Romeo. Romeo, the third seed. Davenport-Peters began in the fourth position, but beat Carol Giannotti in our first match. And really applied the pressure. Uh, she capitalized on her strikes, turned them into doubles. This put the pressure on Carol Giannotti, who was not able to answer it. Strike. Diana Diana feeling loose, has a nice loose arm swing, carrying the light hits. Romeo, who was the 1989 Player of the Year, won a $113,000, won over that. That's a record for a year on the tour. 
She also holds one other record, making 78 consecutive match play appearances, which is something that is very difficult to do week after week to make the top 24. She did it 78 consecutive times. One Leaves of the most consistent players on the LPBT. Leaves a three. Talk about consistency. She's cashed 19 of the 21 tournaments. Always there. She uh, really very seldom gets into trouble. Can play out virtually every type of uh, lane condition. She has a very basic, compact game. We're going to take a look at it right here. Takes a five-step approach. Does not use much of the approach, though. Once again, very compact. And here, see here, not a big push away. She has about a shoulder-high backswing. And as she comes through, she has a nice knee bend. A little bit forward with the shoulders at the line, but it works for her. Second frame, she says ball speeds are big concern. That's right. Her first shot went 17 miles per hour. And her second shot for the strike. Here you can see, once again, a very aggressive shot. Getting that ball outside of the second arrow, but it's coming back. She got some pin action there. We call that a wall shot. And uh, you mentioned the first shot was 17. That one again was 17. And this is a key for Robin Romeo to keep up that ball speed. Davenport teeters through the nose. Turning that one a little bit early. Does not, did not stay behind it to delay the roll, to delay the hook. 3-6-10. We saw Carol Giannotti miss this in the first frame by throwing the six pin around the 10. Diana will try to cover all three see the Davenport Teeters had a rough start in fact she missed the first five cuts of the year and at that point thought about quitting but she's gotten it back together and a spare there as the three barely goes down we talked to Davenport Teeters about what it's like to be the unsung player against all the quality competition here's what she had to say I'm very thrilled and privileged to be here I'm amongst the players on the show today you have Tish and uh, Carol Giannotti going for Bowl of the Year. You have Robin Romeo who's trying to make the shootout this afternoon and uh, the great player in Alita Sill. And um, I'm just very, very pleased to be here and amongst this group. The strike. The strike for Davenport Peters in the third frame. With no. Diana's game, uh, we, we really have been surprised that she has not done more out here on the national level. You know, she's such a great player, and um, I think she is just over overthinks in too many um, circumstances. And this is where she did try to use this and go into the analytical thinking, target alignment, this type of thing, because uh, she's going to be one of the greats if she puts it all together. Tough break for Romeo in the third frame. 4-7-10. Ball coming in extremely high. Chances now of picking it up. She needs to slide the four pin into the 10. 14 years out here on the tour. Leaves the 10. And a reminder, coming up Thanksgiving, college football on ESPN. It is Texas A&M at Texas, 745 East Coast, 445 on the West Coast. So eat your turkey in front of the college football and make it a great Thanksgiving. Romeo now in the fourth frame. Along with uh, two very good fans, Joan and Ray Romeo. Robin's mom and dad are in the audience. Virginia Wilson, her aunt, who is 80 years old, came to watch this week. And a very good friend of hers, Jack and Fredo from New York, is on hand. So these are uh, some family members that were really here to offer a lot of support for Robin throughout the week. 258. Speed still around 17 and a half miles an hour. A well, very consistent player. And a spare in the fourth frame. Robin's mom looking on. And I mentioned Joan Romeo. Has done a lot in the past for the ladies pro bowling. Davenport Teeter is extremely poised here. Yes, she appears to be handling uh, the pressure very well. 
but uh, when you have a, a, a good shot, you feel comfortable with the lane condition, it uh, eases the pressure of the television cameras and all the light. Fourth frame and a strike. Really gets some nice rotation on the ball. Gets out of it early enough. Very free. Watch here. Ball going out to about the 12th board, making a nice break. The head pin up against the wall. Look at that pin action. When you've got them going like this, you know things are going your way. Davenport Teeters now up by 22 pins. And a look at bowler track here at 18 miles an hour. She's on the 13th board at 15 feet, out to the 7th board at 45 and able to bring it back. Fifth frame. Brooklyn. 3-6. Did she do anything differently there, did you notice? Well, she's playing that lane a little bit tighter anyway, but she did not get that ball out. She went from the 12th board only to about the 9th, 11th, not quite quite out to the 7th like she did in the shot previously on lane 20. Speed, though, is, has been consistent at about 18 and a half miles an hour. Spare for Davenport Peters in the 5th frame. Is it hard to maintain ball speed throughout a match? Uh, I would say, yeah, when you're that consistent and everything's going for you, no. I mean, when you're on a roll, it's not hard to maintain your ball speed. But uh, when your game is not, where you're right not, when you're not on top of your game, then it's difficult fifth to keep frame. up your ball speed and maintain it. Right there for Romeo, striking the fifth frame. He was down by 20 before the frame. Great ball reaction here, uh, or pin action, I should say. Her ball deflects, does not take out the five as strongly as it could, but enough where it just topples the four. Romeo has one title this year, one in Athens in April. She's down by 20 now. Got a third in Ashland and a third in Rockford. Began both those tournaments from the number two spot. She began here today in the number three position. Another strike, a double. For Romeo, that was her sixth frame. Romeo, 18 miles an hour on her last shot, so she increased the speed. But right now, it's Davenport Teeters, who is up by 10, halfway through our second match. Welcome back, everybody. Davenport Teeters, sixth frame for her. She leads Robin Romeo by 10 pins. See how she reacts under the pressure. Beautiful shot. Another strike. Really looks good. She's in time, staying right around the pocket. When she hits them, they seem to really go. That's her fourth strike in six frames. Six-year veteran, but only one title. Came in 1989. Only on TV once last year, and this is her first appearance this year. Like you mentioned, she struggled in the beginning part of the year. She started to bowl much better here a few weeks ago in Rockford when she finished eighth. She said, I really feel like everything started to go my way. But a washout there in the seventh frame. That particular shot did not go her way. It went too far to the right. We saw Carol Giannotti pick this up in the last match. We'll see if Diana Davenport can do so and keep her lead. She'll need to slide the head pin into the 10 pin. You see her going through the routine. Reach for the target's the last thing she says to herself. Mm. Ball hooking off to the left does not take the head pin. We haven't seen, through a match and a half, any runs of strikes at all. Well, when you've got a pair that's acting a little bit differently, it really does appear 19 is tighter than lane 20 for the right-handers as well. She hit the seventh board, and that ball just stayed out to the seventh board. It did not make it back. On uh, 20, if she gets it out to the seventh, it does come back. Yes. Robin Romeo with a strike. <laughs> Romeo, the bowler of the year, player of the year in 1989. Kind of struggled a bit since. Here's what she had to say about coming back. Yeah, yeah, I'm in 1989. Um, every, everything seems to go my way on television. Um, I had a lot of luck, and uh, the one thing that I did was I was very aggressive on the shows. In the last couple of years, I haven't been aggressive at all, and I've been very... I don't know if you want to call it lazy, but I just didn't go out and, and bowl. So today I'm trying to look to be very aggressive and just throw the ball and, and just see what happens. It's going well. That's four strikes in a row for Romeo. 
And something else that Robin uh, mentioned to me is uh, that she is approaching our matches different. She wanted to take advantage when her opponent gave her an opening. Diana Davenport opened in the seventh. Robin Romeo bounced, bounced back with this double. And here's her reaction. She knows she's being aggressive here. Now it's Davenport Teeters. Trailing by 24, her eighth frame. And a strike. Big shot there. Really, just an error in the seventh, pr seventh frame by letting the ball out too far to the right on lane 19 with the washout, which, once again, she probably didn't feel that she threw that bad of a shot, but she hit that seventh board, and the ball just hung and did not make it back. Best possible game Diana can shoot at this point is 224. Robin Romeo is working at a 228 pace. Ninth frame. Having problems with lane 19, missing to the right, then crossing over, tried to make some type of adjustment, went Brooklyn, did not carry. She seems to have gone Brooklyn a couple of times on the left-hand lane. Well, and she also missed extremely to the right with the washout, so that's what she is playing with it. She is just not getting lined up on that lane. Looking for the spare, the six. And it's fair for Davenport Cheaters. And remember that later tonight on ESPN, it's NFL football. Dave Craig and the Chiefs against the Seahawks of Seattle, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific, of course. Craig, now the quarterback of the Chiefs, used to play for Seattle. And I used to follow him quite a bit when he was uh, playing for Seattle. Romeo in the ninth frame now looking for her fifth consecutive strike. Got it. Beautiful shot by Robin. Very, very impressive here this afternoon. She pretty much locked it up right there with that strike. Beautiful. All ten right in the pit. Her goal was to be more aggressive, as we've talked about. Well, take a look there in the seventh frame. That was the, the best shot she could have thrown. That's where she's turned around her match play performance. When Diana opened the seventh, she jumped on it, took a got a strike. Six in a row, perhaps. Yes. Really getting nice ball reaction now. Just uh, dice in the rack there. Diana looking on, saying, I just uh, sort of ran into a, a Mack truck here with Robin. <laughs> $4,500, though, her best tournament of the year. Without question, her best tournament in a couple of years. Romeo told us that she wanted to focus more on other players. A lot of other players don't want to pay attention to the other people. But she says that she wants to. And that has helped her here. Romeo winning our second match. Romeo winning. This Johnson, of course, is our number one seed. And a win here could wrap up bowler of the year for her. Leala Wagner talks to Tish Johnson after this. Welcome back, everybody, to Las Vegas. The Bud Light Samstown Invitational. The number two seed, Alita Sill, taking on Robin Romeo. Sill has had elbow trouble throughout much of the year and hand trouble and has only bowled in 14 tournaments. She took off all the summer to try to give that uh, tendonitis in her um, elbow area some rest. She tried to strengthen it, and uh, it seemed to help. But once she starts bowling again, things start to act up. Two veteran performers here. Look at the lane breakdown here for Robin Romeo. Lane 19, four strikes. Lane 23 seems to have both lanes pretty well figured out. Oh, look at this. Head pin. Oh, not taking out the 10. Thought it was going to. We call that the messenger. Romeo had 13 titles in the career coming into the tournament. Watch the pin action here. The head pin up against the left sideboard. But it comes back. But it runs into the six pin and does not take out the 10. Romeo for the spare. Down goes the 10. Two veteran bowlers. They've combined for 30 titles. And a look at Bill Selman, the manager of the sports marketing division of Anheuser-Busch Incorporated. It's wonderful to have them on board here, uh, backing the ladies' pro bowlers tour, this particular event, and also our Bud Light showdown coming up next. Romeo needs to win this tournament, by the way, to get into that. Oh, a lot of pressure on Robin here. If she does not, Wendy McPherson will be in the showdown, and I think Wendy McPherson is probably off somewhere on the sideline uh, 
No offense, you don't like to root against a player, but uh, you want to take the money to the bank as well. And Wendy would like to see herself in this showdown. Strike for Romeo. She had six strikes in her first match. She's really getting the pin action here with the ball coming up extremely high. Head pin up against the sideboard. The four pin takes out the nine, almost left the four nine split. Down it goes. Sill won here in 1984 and 1986. Has really had a lot of confidence in this particular bowling set. Her first championship round was U.S. Open, and she lost to Tish Johnson in that by three pins. So you see she's in her second championship round this year, but again, the injuries have slowed her. But she says that loss to Johnson in the U.S. Open finals for the title was so devastating that she hasn't been able to look at, look at the tape. And Lita has also made some changes recently in uh, ball fit, thumb. Now, if Syl can win here today, she goes into number one on the all-time earnings list. Here's what she had to say. Well, I just found that out today. Um, I sure would like to get that back. I lost it a few years ago, and um, hopefully with this win, um, put me right back out on top. Syl comes into the tournament in the third spot all-time on the career earnings list. And like she said, she held it at one time, but uh, there's still a lot of years left for this young lady. Also, Lisa Wagner right up there in that career all times uh, leading money leader right now. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of years left for Lisa Wagner. So I think it's something we're, we are going to see be battled for for years to come. Still leaves the seven in her third frame. Tanner's playing around the ninth eighth board, right around the second arrow, which is a little bit of a swing. Romeo now, her third frame. Robin bowled uh, much better in the morning. She made her biggest moves uh, in the morning blocks. That would tend to uh, favor you for the television show as normal. The lanes are dressed similar to what they are in the morning blocks. So if you tend to bowl well during the event in the morning, you, you can stand uh, to have a pretty good shot on the television pair if the lanes were dressed the same way. And apparently they, they are today. Romy had a slow start this week. At one point was in 16th and was able to work her way up in the last couple of days. We talked to Robin about how important this match is in the overall scheme of things on the ladies' tour. Yes, it is. There's a lot riding on today's show with Tish and Carol and then with myself with the showdown. So um, I, would, I would love to come out and win because I finished second here twice. And um, I always bowl well here at Samstown, so um, hopefully everything will work my way. Romeo's up by one, her fourth frame. Well, she finished uh, third a couple weeks ago in Rockford, Illinois, where she lost to Carol Giannotti. Through the nose, 3-6-10. She, she bowled a good game there. She shot 213, but uh, Carol Giannotti at the time shot 226. Coming up high on 19. We've seen the 3-6-10 left a, a couple of times now. Well, actually, one by Carol, one by Diana, and now by Robin. And a spare for Romeo, converting the 3-6-10. She averaged, by the way, 224 on the TV pair. Leah Sill only averaged 189 on the television pair. She had the lowest television average of the five finalists. Sill has won twice here. She won the WIBC Queens in 1983 and 1985. 17 career titles coming into the tournament. And her first title coming at the young age of 19. Oh my, solid nine pin. One of the only true taps in bowling, they say. The, for a left-hander, solid nine. A right-hander, it would have been a solid eight. She told us the weather has a lot to do with the condition of her left elbow. Cold and damp weather hurts her, obviously. That's not the case here in Las Vegas. A look at her last shot here when the solid nine pitch. 11th board right around 15 feet. Good ball speed, 18 miles an hour. Once again, just a minimum amount of balls. Two boards. Still with a spare. And coming up next, a reminder out to Frankfurt, Germany for the 
championship match between Jim Courier and Boris Becker in the ATP Tour World Championship. Stay with us. That's up next on ESPN. Fifth frame now for Alita Sill. Leads by one. Oh, head pin coming off the wall stops right in front of the seven. Good pin action there. Unfortunately, not enough to take out that seven pin. Neither bowler are able to get any momentum going here. There you go. Watch that head pin again off the right side wall. Here it comes flying back, but stops dead right in front of the seven. This is Sill's fourth consecutive spare after opening up the match with a strike. Now it's Romeo's turn to fifth frame. 0-2 on television in the fall. Robin ranking 10th in earnings Before so winning far. today, obviously. In 1992, 32,000. That's right. Nice shot there. Actually, almost 33,000. A $20,000 first place prize here today would uh, move her up quite a bit in the ranking for earnings. She is sixth, though, in the point list. So uh, she is usually right there in the thick of things, making those final. She's also finished sixth a couple of times so far this fall, just missing out of the telecast. Dead even now. Sixth frame for Romeo. Another strike. That's two in a row. And she's up by ten. Robin Romeo may be starting to catch fire. She had six strikes in her last match. She's now got two in a row as she tries to beat Alita Sill and move on and take on Tish, champion, Tish Johnson for the championship. Welcome back, everybody. Alita Sill against Robin Romeo. This is Sill in the sixth frame. You see she's been on television an awful lot in her long and successful career. 62 career television appearances, a 210 average to maintain over all those games. Alita coming up light, leaving herself a washout. Now, Alita's also doing what Tish Johnson thinks she might have to do, use a shinier ball on lane 20, a duller surface ball on lane 19, because lane 19 appears to be tighter. That shot was just in error. She went from the 10th board to the 7th board. She has only been going from the 10th board to about the 9th board. So uh, she swung that ball two boards farther to the left. It did not come back. She's trying to convert it. Beautiful head pin right into the 7th. Nice shot for Alita Sill in her 11th year. A lot of washout conversions. Well, this is the second one. Carol Giannotti picked it up in the first game. Right there, head pin right into the 7. It's the mirror of uh, what a right-hander would do, throwing the head pin into the 10. Seventh frame for Sill. Strike. Much better shot, staying more direct, more on line. Romeo looking for a turkey. She's up by 14. Seventh frame for her. I know Robin's sister, Tori Romeo, also a member of the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour. Nephew David out there watching, rooting Robin on. She does appear to have that uh, aggressiveness that we saw in 1989 when she was the bowler of the year. Three in a row. She's starting to catch fire like she did in her opening match against Davenport Teeters when she had six successive strikes. Up by 24 now. Romeo with one title this year came in April in Athens. Trying to move on here. Eighth frame. Nice shot. You can see it. Reminder coming up after the championship, we're going to have the Bud Light Showdown. Never been done before. It's going to be entertaining, to say the least. It's basically a shootout for dollars, kind of like a skins game in golf. Yeah. And Romeo, if she can win this tournament, gets into that. That's right. She'll knock out Wendy McPherson, who right now is sitting in position to be in the showdown. Still down by 34. Needs a strike here in the eighth. Oh, Forkin just tapping out the seven at the last minute. Gives her the double.
Watch here, the ball coming up a little bit light. Four pin, thank you very much. Just topples the seven and her reaction. Okay. Little smile. For the turkey in the ninth frame. She needs this one to set herself up. She gets it. Her best possible game can be 2.33. Robin Romeo working at a 2.20 pace. If Robin can step up right now and throw a strike, she'll be right in the 2.30 pace. Still making the adjustment from the lane on which she had the washout last time. That's right. But still coming up a little light, but getting the pin action, carrying the light hit. Romeo for five in a row. Mm, something appeared to be on the bowling ball. Smart move. Take it off. Stay Look, focused. Looking for the five bagger. She's up by 14. You can see she's getting into that now with her reaction was yes. She knew if she got that, there was no way Alita Sill was going to shut her out if Robin Romeo stays clean this frame. Her big concern has been ball speed. It's been consistent all the way through. Really threw this one well, catching the head pin, carrying, and watch her reaction. She's into this now. Yes. She looks mean there. <laughs> <laughs> That's that new aggressiveness. That's right. The new Robin Romeo. And it's actually the old Robin Romeo coming back. <laughs> Tenth frame. You can see there, nine, spare nine. Shut out Alita Silk. Can she get nine on a first ball? Right. Mm. Three, six, ten. And she shakes her head, ball crossing over, a little bit left, probably turned that ball a little bit early, dropping the thumb, ball rotating too much. She can, if she spares now and gets, if she spares strikes, she shuts out Alita Sill. If she gets a spare and a strike, spare nine, we could have a possible tie. First step is a spare. Not an easy spare. There it is. So a strike now upcoming here for Romeo, and she locks out Alita Sill. <laughs> and you can see she just looked over at the scoreboard realizing that uh, pin count. She said she knew she threw not a good shot. A strike right here will shut her out. Taking a little extra time, a deep breath. Alita Sill just wants to have the opportunity. For the match. Moving on as she beats Alita Sill. Great shot. And Ray Romeo, uh, dad, just stood up in the background, almost came off his chair. It's definitely more pressure on the parents at times, I think, than it is on the player. Sill will come in third, only her second TV appearance this year. Trying to shake off the effects of the bad elbow and I'm sure she's satisfied with a third place finish considering how it's been going for her physically this year. Oh, well, that's exactly right. You know, to come out and do so well in the long format in a, in a big money tournament, uh, I'm sure she's got to feel very happy with at least a third place finish this week. Romeo Bowl to 234. Still finishing up. It's going to be Robin Romeo and Tish Johnson for the championship. We're back with our championship frame in a moment. Here we go, everybody. The championship match of the Bud Light Samstown Invitational. Tish Johnson, with three titles this year, will bowl first. She won the Las Vegas Western Open. That was here last year to begin the year. And then the Michigan Classic and then the U.S. Open. A lot at stake in this match. Tish Johnson going for Bowler of the Year honors. Robin Romeo trying to get into the shootout or the showdown. Johnson won here in 1989. She was Bowler of the Year in 1990, but she has never been Player of the Year. And that's something that she hopes to accomplish with a win here. It seems that she really wants the respect of her peers. Trying to convert the three. Ten does so beautifully. Nice pair there for Tish Johnson to start. And now it's Robin Romeo, who has won two matches to get here. Robin Romeo, 19 caches in 21 events. 16 top 24 finishes. One of the 
kind of the overall consistent players on the women's tour, trying to stay aggressive. Was so in the last few matches. Carries the wall, light shot. Break there for Romy to start. She begins with a strike. Actually looking down at her hand, wiping the perspiration off. Apparently she did not get a good, good feel of this ball, but it was a good reaction. Romeo's speed, that last shot, 18 miles an hour. That's faster than what she's been averaging. She's been around 17 throughout much of the afternoon. She probably came out of it a little bit fast, a little bit harder because uh, she dropped it a little bit. Normally that would cause you to slow the ball down. Through the nose and a break there, leaving the 6'10". Big break. She almost left the 7 pin with it. And there's uh, Ray Romeo, her father, and uh, <laughs> big deep <laughs> sigh. This is Ray Romeo. Normally he does not like to sit on the show. He's normally Doesn't want to be on, Leo. Does not want to be on. He's normally <laughs> pacing in the background. I, it's like trying to contain a, a, a wild tiger back there, I think. Because After that shot, he may be pacing. <laughs> I know, Ray, and he's usually on the move. 6'10 <laughs> for Romeo. He says, you put me on TV, I have to get up and walk so you can't find me anymore. Tish Johnson trying to bounce back now after opening up with a 310 conversion. 17 pro titles in 12 years. Alita Sill and Tish Johnson came out right about the same time. Both, both very young players, 19 years old. Oh, tough break here. We saw Alita Sill do that on lane 20 in her match, the solid nine pin. Now, with both players doing that, I'd almost have to believe that there might be a, a pin off spot there. One of the big things that Johnson was talking to us about was the fact that she has a rep from her ball company out here, and that's really helped her out, she says. A, a big advantage this week. Uh, Tish has done mostly on her own throughout the year. This week, uh, two uh, reps from her company were out. So it gives you the added confidence. You get to confer with them a little bit about equipment, uh, about ball reaction, and it's just nice to have someone bounce those thoughts back to you. Johnson knocked down the nine for the spare in the second frame. The U.S. Open title that she won this past year says... Uh, she says was very nice for her because her mother had just undergone a mastectomy. And her mother, by the way, is in attendance here this afternoon. Oh, beautiful shot there. It's here that she now has to get out lane 19, and she carried. That was the extra little slap of the hand, saying, okay, I hit you, hit the pocket, and they all went down. Romeo now in the third frame. last title, the 1992 Athens Open, earlier in April. 14th year as a member. There is a consistency illustrated by the graphic. One title a year is what she averages. And she had that great year in 1989, but a tough shot there. Coming up just a little bit high. You know, we saw Carol Giannotti leave the 4-9. We've seen Robin Romeo leave the 4-9, and we've seen two left-handers leave the 9-pin. I would almost have to say that 9-pin might be just a tad off spot. Ball coming up a little... <laughs> Extremely high, but just uh, that or it's just driving very hard in the back end. 4-9 now. Needs to slide the four pin over to the nine. A big shot. Oh. That's what Carol Giannotti tried to do earlier. Go for the four. As it is an open frame for Romeo. And a reminder, next week, the stop on the tour is the National Doubles from Las Vegas. Right here, 2.30 Eastern Time, 11.30 on the West Coast. Big opening there for Tish Johnson. She now has the lead by 13. Robin Romeo trying to get the lead back up in the fourth frame. Romeo's first open frame in three matches. And it was a pocket shot. That's tough to take when you leave a pocket split. Almost leaving the 4-9 again. Four pin just falling at the last moment. Fell right in front of the nine pin. Romeo trying to play the role of spoiler here as well as get into the Bud Light showdown, which follows. She has to win this tournament to get into it. And the spare for Romeo in the fourth frame. And here's where we stand for Bowler of the Year. Giannotti, four titles. Johnson, three titles. That, of course, could be affected by how this match ends up. Leanne Barrett, Mary, and Dugan basically out of contention. It's either Giannotti or Johnson. We've talked about that Johnson probably has to win this match. Pretty much appears that way. Oh, my. I think that was the eight pin that took out the seven. That was hard to tell. Tish says, yes. 
Trying to put the... Keep the pressure on, Robin. Let's watch the pin action here. I lost uh, the pin there. Something came out of the back. Oh, my goodness. And took the seventh. Now she's getting pumped. One of the more animated players on tour. Yeah, yeah. there it goes. She's going for a turkey now in the fifth frame. And like she said in the interview, she's holding her own destiny. And she knows it. And she wants to come out the victor here. That would give her two majors if she wins. It would give her the U.S. Open and this particular event. Along with four titles, she would take over her earnings list. She would probably be bowler of the year. She's also number one in all the other important categories. Romeo in the fifth frame in a deep hole. Not near the pocket like she has been throughout most of the afternoon. Well, she left the 4-9 on lane 20, apparently trying to get the ball a little bit more room. It did not make it back. Left the 2-7. There's a pin sitting in the channel. We will have that removed. It's on the left channel. We'll probably see a little stick come down here shortly. There it is. There it comes. <sighs> from, oh, from where we don't know. <laughs> Gremlins in the roof. Okay, she's going two to, seven. to try to fit the ball between the two seven. Cannot have another open frame. Looks good. Conversion there, a big one for Romeo in the fifth frame. But now Robin's still trailing by 35 pins. We saw her put the momentum together in the last half of the previous games. We'll see if she can start it back up here in the sixth frame. Romeo in both her preceding matches has had runs of strikes. She's only had one in this match. He opened with a strike. Since there, since then, it's been three spares and an open. Whoa. Brooklyn strike. Well, getting around that one early, pulling the ball, going left. Robin Romeo trying to catch fire, but it's Tish Johnson with the commanding lead as she looks to hold on and win the championship and player of the year. Welcome back, everybody. Tish Johnson in the sixth frame looking for four consecutive strikes. She's up by 35 pins over Robin Romeo. You can see there, Tish Johnson won this event in 1989, trying to make it a two-time titleist here in this event. Even though there was an event here in February, it's not as if she's defending the title. Lori Nichols won this particular event last November. All of Johnson's three titles this year came before the fall tour. In the fall, she's 0-2, in fact, on TV. This looks to be her best performance so far. She lost in Rockford and Wilmington, took third place in both those tournaments. Seventh frame, another strike. Look at the emotion from Fish Johnson. Yeah. When you're holding your own destiny and you just threw five strikes and you have a 55 pin lead over your opponent, I think you've got to be getting a little bit excited. Great shot here, perfect. Head pin up against the wall, five pin. Look at the action from the four pin. And of course, Tish Johnson is a few lanes away, dancing down. As long as she doesn't hurt herself and can finish out this match, she will be the winner. <laughs> Romeo now, seventh frame. And a strike, only her, actually her third of the match. And Carol Mann on hand from the LPGA Hall of Fame, also a member of the International Women's Sports Hall of Fame on hand here this afternoon, along with Pam Palmieri, the advisor for the AWPB, which is the Association of Women Pro Bowlers. We're out to better uh, women's professional bowling. And it's nice to have them with us this afternoon. Romeo for the turkey. She's down, though, by 45 pins. She's starting to catch fire. And I mentioned before, Tish Johnson appeared to be the winner, but actually not. Uh, at this point, Robin Romeo can still shoot 234. Tish Johnson shooting at a 239 pace. She would have to pretty much stay clean and get some good count for the next three frames. Tish Johnson, as you see, 10 titles from the number one spot. Eight frame and six in a row. Oh, my. That was what I call a TV shot. Did you see the pin action there? That was the eight pin that took... Watch the eight pin here. If you didn't see it, you're going to see it again. Well, 
No, that was the sixth pin that took out the seven. I tell you, she has the pins flying. This has to obviously be a wonderful moment for someone who has wanted this so badly and to come through with this kind of performance. I think we will see, her, see uh, quite a few tears of joy from Tish Brown. She's seven. very sentimental. She is just really revving the ball up uh, already. Uh, she's sniffling a little bit. I think uh, the tears are already starting to form in her eyes. And we've talked about the fact that she was Bowler of the Year in 1990, but it's the Player of the Year award that she wants so badly, isn't it? And that is voted on by her peers. It's something that uh, Tish has, has strived for. Um, we'll have to wait and see. She pretty much deserves it at this point. She's got uh, two major wins. How can you not give her Player of the Year? Johnson, someone who was an excellent tennis player as a youngster. In fact, as a 14-year-old, was ranked third in the state of California, and right now she's glad she did not pick tennis because she told us last night that she almost did. And this is the well, ultimate moment here for her. The hopes to, to retire at the age of 40, possibly hit the senior golf tour. See how much this means to Tish Johnson. She wanted this so badly. And a reminder, the NIT on ESPN Wednesday night on ESPN Indiana against Florida State. That's Wednesday. Start your Thanksgiving holiday early. Second game, UCLA against Seton Hall. And that's college basketball on ESPN. <laughs> Romeo with a strike in the tenth, but this is Tish Johnson's moment. Robin Romeo shooting about 199. Look at there. I can't imagine how it feels. Once again, I have not been in that position. She says her idol is Earl Anthony. And one of the things that we were talking about was the fact that as a lefty, she feels like she has to work a little bit harder to get respect. Well, she was worked very hard at her game, took the summer, practiced a lot, and you know she is one of the few left-handers that does play all over the lane. She can play 15, she can play any type of line, and uh, even a few players like Robin Romeo said, hey, Tish, you act like a right-hander. You throw the ball like a right-hander, and uh, these, are, these are thoughts of encouragement, words of encouragement from her competitor. Tish Johnson. Looking for eight strikes in a row. Tenth frame here. What a great performance. This will go down in the record books right here. Amazing effort here by Tish Johnson. Well, that's the way to do it. It's one thing to have an opportunity, but it's another to be able to capitalize like she has with the opportunity. Possible 279. Beautiful game. Really crank the pocket, too. <laughs> Not one lucky shot in, the, in uh, that bat. She had a 298 last night in the position round, and she's going to go over 270 here. One strike, it's 279. Robin Romeo finishes second. Romeo with an excellent tournament. A little disappointed. She will not be in the showdown. Wendy McPherson will be one of the five players. A standing ovation for Tish Johnson. She just shot 279. Ten strikes in the match for Tish Johnson. A 279. Wow. Remarkable performance. You can see there the crowd very appreciative of all the strikes, of the high scores, of the aggressiveness that Tish Johnson came out as the number one seed to take over. Tish Johnson wins $20,000. This is her fourth title of the year. And now she hopes to be bowler of the year and player of the year. Tish Johnson winning the 1992 Bud Light Sam's Town Invitational. The applause is for Tish Johnson, who has won the 1992 Bud Light Sam's Town Invitational, a 279 in the championship match to beat Robin Romeo. And, uh, the trophy presentation by Fred Liskey of Anheuser-Busch. Tish, on behalf of Bud Light, I'd like to present you this trophy for your fantastic performance. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank uh, Bud Light and uh, Samstown and, and the staff. You guys are great. It's Bud Light time. Tish, by the way, was dancing to the music of the preceding commercial. A fantastic moment. Without a doubt, and in comes uh, Mike Kaufman, the general manager of the bowling center here at Samstown. A uh, little jacket for you, Tish. Thank you, Bill. On behalf of Bob Newman, our Vice President and General Manager here at Samstown, of all, all of our 1,600 employees, Tish, it's my pleasure to present you with this beautiful champion's jo jacket to uh, commemorate your victory here. And we also have a check in the amount of $20,000.
Congratulations, Tim. That'll buy you a lot of Bud Light, won't it, Tim? Oh, you betcha. Um, I'd like to thank Mike and Samstown. They've always been outstanding to us. The staff here, I mean, they treat us like, you know, it's my home. And uh, I'll be back next year. All righty. Tish, you started out a little slow, first two frames, uh, but she managed to put it on. What happened? <laughs> um, 19 was a little bit tighter for me, so that usually what I try to do is go out and just get the ball off my hand, the first ball. And uh, that's what I did, and I didn't know what I was going to do on the spare, but then the nine pin sort of made me a little bit mad. So then it was pump it up and let's have a good time. Apparently you had a, a good feel for the lanes. Um, I bowled on this pair quite a bit, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it's good to me. Okay. Let's take a look now at what this does to the race for Bowler of the Year. Johnson and Giannotti now both have four titles. Tish, though, has won two majors. She's won over $91,000. You very much obviously want these two awards, Player of the Year, Bowler of the Year. Do you think you've wrapped it up now? Um, Giannotti bowled good um, the last part of the year. I bowled good the first part of the year. Um, I'm just going to leave it up to the voters. I think we both bowled good, and um, we'll see how it goes. Tish, congratulations. Uh, quite a day for you. Thank you very much. All right. You want to stay tuned, everybody, because up next is the Bud Light Showdown. It will be a shootout for dollars, kind of like this skins game in golf. That's the follow, so stay here with us, everybody.